Hello, today I'm here with a new video and if you don't know who I am, my name is Lisa, I'm a cruelty for YouTuber and today I am going to talk about eyeshadow palettes. And you may be wonder what eyeshadow palettes and I have been thinking about old palettes that was so hyped when they came and that I have like special memories about and not all of these palettes are like super old, some of them are super super old, some of them are still available, some are discontinued. But all I have picked out 10 palettes and these 10 palettes was palettes that like my little community on YouTube, the beauty YouTube that I am a part of or yeah was, is, I don't know. These palettes were really hyped and I hope that you think this is going to be fun. I'm also planning on doing hyped limited edition palettes that I do have in my collection. If you want that, please let me know. So yeah, I'm going to talk about 10 palettes that I really remember, like the release and everything. So I hope that you will enjoy this and yes, let's get into this. I think I may be going to scooch a little bit. First up, I took the Hasina 2 palette from Blush Tribe. Blush Tribe is no longer available. She did close down her brand, but this palette was really like unique when it came out. It looks like this. I feel it's fun to think like if this would come out now, it wouldn't be like super special. But when this came out, it wasn't like many palettes that was purple and green and blue. I can't remember, maybe I should have looked this up when this came out, but it I think it was 2018 maybe. And I was so against this palette at first. Like, I didn't want it because this wasn't my thing when this came out. But people raved about it. Like... Everybody talked about it. It was like their favorite palette and I caved. I bought it and I do love it. This is one of the few that I actually have saved from Colourpop. Colourpop Blush Tribe. I have had a lot of palettes from Blush Tribe but this is one of the few that I've kept because in my collection this is still special and I remember like how fun I thought it was even though I didn't like these colors and I think that this like tributes to my way forward. <laughs> then we have a palette from Colourpop and this is the Good Sports and Good Sport and this palette I can honestly say that I bought it because of uh, this shade but this felt like a palette from Colourpop that people it wasn't maybe like super hyped when it came out but then when it was going to be discontinued and when it was gone, people did really regret that they didn't buy it. And this palette isn't like that special. This ebb shade is an amazing shade. I do have colors that look similar to this one now, but when this came out, there were like no one like ebb. And I just think, I I, I didn't want this at first. I think I saw Paulina's Beauty do a look with this and I was at Colourpop and I was like maybe I should buy it and I did and I used Ebb Shade and I fell in love. And it's just so fun like still today sometimes when I talk about this palette people comment like I'm so sad that I missed the Good Sport palette. And I think that is fun because th this isn't like a super fun palette. It has some colors that really like sticking out and is really special. But yeah, I'm happy that I do have it. It's old as hell though, but I'm so happy that I have it. Next up I have from Menagerie and this palette was, they were like sneak peeking shade per day I think so like two weeks before the release they sneaked peek a shade per day and yep, it's the feral palette and I think this palette really was like making it 
from Minardri. I think Minardri has this palette to thank for the most. They have the Dragon Child before this, and they were called Makeup Monsters, if I'm not mistaken. But then they like rebranded, named it Minardri, and came out with this palette. And I think this was really like when they decided like how their brand should look. Like it's an animal on the front. I really do like the front of this palette. And the color story. It didn't look like this the first one. These two was to other shades. Like a more light beige and a light pink. I think. Then people did complain about it. Which I thought was so strange. But this was really really hyped when it came. And this was also special when it came out. I do like this palette. It's not my favorite palette from Menadre, but I do think it is really good. I don't know if she is discontinuing this because they did like they discontinued the Dragon Child palette and made it in singles only. I don't know if it was the same with this one, but I remember how hyped this was. Like Everybody that I followed did videos about this, did rave about this, and was just so, so in love with it. And I do have really good memories with this one. And I know that it was not only me that fell in love with Menagerie after using this palette. So I do think that Menagerie really has the Feral palette to thank for their success. Next is also a Colourpop palette. And... <laughs> this is one of the monochromatic palettes and I don't know if you like remember the monochromatic things and when it was so so big and I think this was the most popular of the monochromatics and it's just my luck. They released this for St. Patrick's Day a year. I can't remember which year and this was so so popular and I do really like it. Uh, it is one of my favorite monochromatic palettes from Colourpop. I know that some like was, it's not all green, so it shouldn't be one of the monochromatic palettes, but I'm totally okay with this because this is so fun to play with. And this was really, why can't I remember which palettes was before this? Was it the orange and the yellow first and then this came? Or did was the bloom? Did it start with the ooh la la and it's my pleasure and then this came? I don't know, but this was so popular. People were so like excited and it wasn't that common with monochromatic green palettes at the time. Then I have a set of palettes and it's from Kaleidos. <laughs> this like really made the beauty YouTube community, the small beauty YouTube community, go bonkers. Um, it was the first... Can I hold up all the three? It was the first sci-fi palettes. I saw... I think it was Annette's Makeup Corner, Paulina Beauty and Angelica Nyqvist using these. And I was like... What is this? For amazing shadows and... I did buy the set and I first did use this sci-fi green palette. I fell in love. This has been one of my absolute favorite palettes for so long. It is just the shimmers in here are amazing. The black is so black and so easy to work with even though it's a really like pitched black. Black? Pitch black black? <laughs> pitch dark black? Pitch black? Black. It is just an amazing palette and I do really miss like Kaleidos old formula. It also was the cyber bronze and when people talk about this, they talk about the red shimmer and the silver shimmer and I do understand why. This red shimmer is amazing. When this came it was really hard to find a good red shimmer. It was in one of the KVD palettes. The was it better together? The one with KVD and Too Faced. It was a red shade called Swoon. 
and this like duped it and this was I think Kaleidos did like amazing with this and I think that this really made a lot of us to love Kaleidos and the last one of the first three was this one the Astro Pink I do like this palette as well I do really miss Kaleidos like this Kaleidos I haven't bought the latest is it four quads that they came out with I haven't bought them because I was on the no buy and I, I didn't want them but like I miss this with Kaleidos and I do remember how 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 hyped these was and like everybody was talking about Kaleidos the amazing formula and I'm so happy that I bought these and I did really love Kaleidos and these were really the palettes that made me love them and it is an amazing brand. It's maybe not my favorite now but it has been me for a long time. I'm actually having a Kaleidos palette on today. Next up is the Yuvia's Place palette and it's the Tribe. This is one of my favorite palettes from Yuvia's Place. I know that a lot of people have this as their favorite palette from Yuvia's Place. And I don't, I, I know why, because this palette is amazing. And it was also like, when this came out, there were no palettes that looked like this on the market. And U.S. Place, I haven't bought a U.S. Place palette in years. I think it maybe was summer 2021 I bought my last U.S. Place palette. S something like that. And... This was just amazing and it still is amazing. It wasn't that long ago since I used this. I used it in December. And the thing that was so special about this, first off, like the shimmers are amazing as always. Like Eva's Place do some of the most amazing shimmers. But it also had like these really bright shades, this one and this one, and then the really amazing shimmers and the amazing darker shades. And this was really, really special when it came out. And I don't know, maybe it doesn't look that much to the world, but it's an amazing palette. Then we're going into two little bit newer palettes and Loose Cosmetics Meet Me in the Underworld. I guess you all know what I feel about this palette. This is one of my top three palettes, I would say, in my collection. This palette, it feels like they came from nowhere. They had, I don't know if it was one or two palettes before this, like some rose palette. And then I started to see more and more people that I followed that did use this. And people was really like in love with it, like with everything, the packaging, and the size of the palette, the color story, and it's even like here at the mirror. I don't want to blind you. It's, it's roses and it's just a really well thought out palette that is so good. It's so nice, it's so good and this like sold out and then they were going to restock it and I bought it. I didn't want to miss out on this one. And I think that this palette really put Louis Cosmetics on, on the map. Like everybody talked good about this palette and that was what made me buy it. The first time I didn't like it that much but now this was a palette that needed to grow on me, that I like really needed to use a lot to, to start to love. And the last palette, I was really wondering if I was going to take this, but this was really special for all the Natasha Denona lovers out there. Um, if you may know this, I am not like that impressed with Natasha Denona. I did buy the retro palette because people did rave about this. People did really love the Natasha Denona formula and also that she did a palette with this color story and a mauve palette. And this is not a bad palette. I wouldn't say that. Like, it's not a bad palette. But is it worth the money? No, it's not. 
luckily I can buy Nintendo Nona in Sweden, so I didn't like have to like pay taxes and stuff for it or shipping or anything. And I got it 20% off from Sephora, so I'm happy about that. But this was really like, I bought it. I wanted to try an Natasha Denona palette because I was like, do I missing out on things? Do, uh, because I had a mini palette before, didn't like it. So I don't know why I wanted to, is this mid-size? I think so. I don't know why I wanted a mid-size palette, but I, I, I did. But. Uh, yeah and this came out and people were like really raving about this but I think like there is Natasha Denona people and there is Natasha Denona people that are not Natasha Denona like I am not a Natasha Denona person and it feels like it is the same formula in the palettes so if you like it you're going to love or if you love it you're going to love the palettes but for me I have so many other palettes in my collection that doesn't cost this much that I love so much more. I don't know, maybe it is because it is like these cream to powder, some of these, and it's just like not my thing. I have been debating if I'm going to decluttering this one. I don't know. I have done some good looks with it, but for the money, I would want more. But I still wanted to talk about this palette because this was really... I know that a lot of people that I follow have this as their favorite palette from Natasha Denona. And that's why I bought it, even though it's not like my typical colors, but I was like, people seem to love it, so maybe I should try it. So yeah, that was all the palettes I wanted to talk about. I hope this was fun. Did you have any of these palettes or did you miss out of any of these palettes? Please let me know down in the comments. I'm thinking about, as I said, doing this but with limited edition palettes and talk a little bit about the limited edition palettes that I have in my collection. Spoiler, it's going to be a lot of um, collab palettes. I hope that you liked this video and if you're not subscribing to my channel, please do so you don't miss any of my videos and I hope that I will see you next one. Bye!